out of the white fire heart of Almighty God cometh forth the circle and sword of blue flame, tangible evidence of the mighty power of universal love, the circle and sword of blue flame is a manifestation of the protective influences of cosmos. You bear within yourself, beloved ones, the means of drawing forth from the heart of God that cosmic energy directed in protection of those sacred jewel-like designs that are the fullness of the divine mind. In the universe itself, in outer manifestation, one star differeth from another star in glory. Even so is the resurrection from the dead. Let humanity then understand that different individuals have different development according to their application to divine law. But remember, beloved hearts of light, that every human being upon the planetary body has the power of free will. When man determines that nothing is going to stop them from receiving those cosmic initiations and advancements that are the blessing of every soul who will keep the flame of God, if he wills it so, then I believe that nothing can and nothing will stop that individual from making that cosmic progress that they desire, providing they understand these words. In your patience, possess your soul. You must understand that quite suddenly you cannot make a decision for and on behalf of the greatest outpouring of divinity upon yourself and then suddenly expect that it will manifest in the world of form almost on the instant the angels of divine grace, hear your call, and the gift from the heart of God goeth forth. You require, beloved ones, some time to absorb the manifestations of this divine grace given into your world from the hand of God. But please understand, beloved and blessed ones, that the light of eternal purpose which you have invoked can very easily in its initial stages be aborted by questionings and doubts concerning the manifestation of the eternal light which you have invoked on behalf of your own self or others among humanity. Let me today then bring to your attention, beloved keepers of the flame, the information that most human problems in this world are the result of negative influences from the shadowed, Gray ones, those who have taken God's holy light and misqualified it with their own selfish and thoughtless energy. This then is sent forth and often becomes the communion wafer of those entities in dark strata of manifestation in the astral realms, wherein the power then is given by humanity to the astral realms by their thought and feeling, by their free will, so that humanity later become the victims of that energy. This is almost like nations of the free world providing the metal to another country later to be returned to them. We are bullets and bombs. Let me say to you that mankind have become their own worst enemy. They have indulged in these very strange practices of giving power and comfort to the enemy by doing those things calculated to arouse in man the baser passions of life. In order for mankind to actually manifest the Christ consciousness, he must be able to be persuaded that it is a consciousness of light, a curtain of God magnificence lowered around him in response to his call. He needs to believe and he needs to practice the presence of the eternal God for himself. For no one, beloved ones, can practice this presence of God for you. You have been given that divine prerogative, have you not? 
Well, then why don't you exercise it? Do you understand the meaning of this? It is simply a matter of supply and demand. We have the supply if you have the demand. And I believe it is necessary for the best and most precious gifts of heaven to be invoked. For it is not the will of God to inflict upon fallen humanity some element of his great light when it is not to their liking. But God is concerned and all of heaven is concerned with the misqualification of substance. Let me make clear then that the dark ones by their dark designs draw from humankind this energy. Yet it is the dark ones who supply the obsessional thoughts to humanity, the thoughts of negativity, the thoughts of fear, and the thoughts of doubt. It is this into which I would plunge my sword of blue flame. It is the psychic realm and the realm of the astral with its lower manifestations, many times counterfeit images. For example, we have glittering jewels located in the astral realm that are synthetic, but in the higher realms of the spirit, the genuine jewels of congealed light substance manifest. There is always then a counterpart of that which is real. And man must learn and call for the distinguishing facility whereby he will be able to take dominion over the earth to understanding how to divide rightly his own thoughts and thought patterns. For then I am sure that individuals will be free and at last they will come to understand the power of the spiritual realm to invoke this power for humanity and to cure many obsessional diseases and conflicts in the human heart and psyche. I come to you today then in order to intensify the action of our band of holy angels upon the planetary body. Inasmuch as most of mankind's problems stem from psychic and dark origins, it is necessary for us to afford that protection to mankind which you have invoked and called for in your prayers. There is no conflict in the mighty truth of God. There is only the sweet reality of the light shining from his heart. Will you then today visualize with me the diamond shining mind of God? Will you see those light rays pouring out from the central sun, shimmering, glowing, vibrant, joyous, and obedient? Will you see them rush toward the sun of your own solar system, to the heart of beloved Helios and Vesta. Will you see them invest this solar system with the light of God that never fails? And will you see the light rays of your own solar system, of your own sun and the heart thereof, reflect to the planet Earth those magnificent concepts that are the ideas of God, never in conflict with themselves, but forever and eternally turning in the great diurnal power of the universe, manifesting duality and even the polarizations that are little understood by the mortal mind of man. For there are dimensions you do not even dream of directly affecting your own physical universe. There are coexistent spheres here so that all of you are often subject to many influences which you are not always able to distinguish. Will you call to me then and to the heart of God for the power of victory and the power to distinguish these matters so that your hearts will at last no longer be troubled by the questionings and doubts that some of you have? You are a part of God. Why should you have doubts and questionings? Beloved ones, however, I urge upon you that patience and contentment which signifies to you that you have gone at this particular moment in time as far as you can go. You are simply to wait for the coming of another moment. It is not so long to wait for the coming of another moment of progress. And beloved ones, always progress can be accelerated by the hearts of light that question God himself and say, How long, O Lord? Do you see that your prayers and invocations are a pulling upon the hem of the garment of God? Do you see that they are effective as in the case of the importune judge? I will answer her query 
lest she herself weary me with her continual coming. Intercession then must be continual. If you have some idea that you can make a prayer and then forget it, beloved ones, disabuse your minds of that. For while the prayer is complete and the answer comes forth, man should understand that the answer is the answer for a moment. For man does not live in the consciousness of the eternal, but he lives in the consciousness of the moment. And that is the cause of many of mankind's problems, because they do not understand that the cosmic light flows into past history, the before, into the now, and into that which is yet to come. Mankind themselves are limited to the span of the now in ordinary consciousness. But when they bring the power of their Christ's presence and the higher ascended master consciousness to bear upon their lives, then I tell you nothing can be impossible unto them. For if they will, they can reach backward into history and even correct their own errors by drawing forth the opportunities to do so in the future which is ahead of them. This is a very marvelous manifestation of recompense, which is a part of the maturing process for humanity. But now I want to tell you, I do not wish today to create in your consciousness at this moment any of the dark designs that are existing in the world of form, which are troubling humanity politically, economically, and religiously. I would prefer to leave all of the dark doings in that realm temporarily in abeyance as I speak to you about the opportunity that you have to draw forth the circle and sword of blue flame and blaze it into all psychic activities and activities of darkness. Whenever you hear of a disturbing condition in the outer world, make your calls, for I tell you, the call compels the answer. And I tell you, when the answer comes forth, it comes forth with a victory and the jewel diadem of reality in consciousness, which is the manifestation of the light itself acting through you as an electrode of cosmic intercession for and on behalf of humanity. Do you think for one moment that humanity are actually alone? Do you not know and understand that the protective influences of the race are ever standing also in the world of form? We are not dealing with a chessboard on which only the dark figures stand. The white figures also stand, and the magnificent power of the light and the bearers of the true light of God that never fails is most active in the world of form and through embodied individuals as well as directly for and on behalf of cosmic beings by angels of intercession. Let me make it clear then that the power of our circle and sword of blue flame is a magnificent activity that you can participate in. I do not need today to call for human witnesses, for many themselves have called unto me, and they are our witnesses upon the planetary body. Their awareness of our presence and of our service to life on behalf of those divine ideas locked in the very heart of God in the great central sun are their own blazing reality, and they will help and assist mankind in his moment of inquiry and his moment of problem when he desires to have an invocation of our presence and the unfailing light of God into all of his affairs and into all human affairs. I tell you then that there are no darkened conditions in the world of form. There are no problems of the human that cannot be corrected with a circle and sword of blue flame if mankind will understand the protective nature of that great blue flame circle, a circle of protective influence used by God himself and wrapped around and sealing all the creation originally, yet through the errors of human free will and through the errors of human free will alone, mankind have brought sorrow into manifestation in their world and pain and destructive influences. These dwell mainly in the psychic and astral realm, yet they function continually through the human realm because individuals give power unto them. Do you understand what I am saying? It is because embodied humanity give them the power that they have the power. Do you know the meaning of Pandora's box? Do you know the meaning of opening that box and letting loose into the world of form 
those negative thoughts of doubt and fear and human problem. I tell you that the time has come when the keepers of the flame and the children of the holy light of God that never fails must one and all come to that spiritual domain of understanding wherein they will cease to engage in those businesses that contribute to the delinquency of the world. Instead, they will make those calls every time they see that the calls need to be made. I want to tell you, and I tell you truly today, that if you will make these calls, the cosmic miracles that will manifest upon this planetary body are legion, and they are legions of light, they are legions of power, they are legions of cosmic grandeur and cosmic radiance focusing through you and bringing into manifestation the purity of our endeavor. We are concerned with God purity. We are concerned with the manifestation of that purity in your lives and in the life of the entire planetary body. For here now, when springtime comes to your country, I say to you that the garlands of spring, as though they were decorated upon the planetary body, garlanded by the hand of Amaryllis, the goddess of spring, are also a reminder that humanity deserves and ought to enter in to a golden age of triumphant happiness, happiness of the spirit when all of the problems of humanity are resolved by the cosmic light itself. I tell you, in days of old, in golden ages, the great wise kings under divine guidance who were indeed ascended masters seated upon the thrones of the world dispensed in those golden ages now past the holy wisdom droplets from the heart of God truly called drops of life. Will you understand then that those ages will come again as humanity prepare themselves for the light that is dispensed from our realm? Humanity should understand then that they stand between the decision of the light and the darkness. They have served the darkness they have been involved in the darkness. They have practiced negativity. They have practiced doubts. They have practiced questioning. They have practiced nefarious acts upon the planetary body. The black mass and Satanism has been practiced upon the planetary body. And horrible ravages of the human body have been accomplished in the name of confusion and chaos. The great dragon Tiamat has truly shook mankind to the very roots of his existence. Let me say then that as these former conditions shall now pass away, so I say it must be because you invoke the unfailing light of God, the Christ consciousness, and bring it forth into your world, into this realm, into this domain, and do it by the sword of the Spirit, invoking that powerful two-edged sword that cuts every way and guards the tree of life from destruction. I think then you will understand that the power of that two-edged sword the power of the sword of blue flame itself is a tremendous power manifest to humanity by which they can wage a war against the forces of darkness and assist in the bringing in of the kingdom of God as the immortal concept similar to the knights of the round table and the knights of the holy grail. I want you to understand the need to enforce this consciousness upon yourself by almost a militant defense of those divine designs that Almighty God has sprinkled among humankind, even as flowers upon the field themselves. These beauteous flowers of the Spirit are then not to be trampled upon, but to be invoked as a chalice of holy purity, the distilled essence of our light, the outpouring of our radiance, the triumph of the keepers of the flame in overcoming those hordes of darkness that seek to bring destruction to the mind of mankind. I tell you, I am Astraea, and my light is with you now. I call unto the angels of my band and the angels of triumph to invade the world order now and here and bring forth a triumph of capturing all of those dark spirits that are existing in the world order presently being fed by humanity and wiping the slate clean in one glorious manifestation of triumph for mankind as a power of example to them so that we can change the world by the design of the Spirit. I quote to you those transcendent words of St. Paul. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness in high places. Let it be understood then that the powers of darkness in the astral realm have challenged the supremacy of Almighty God and His righteousness. 
and all of the angels of our band and the holy angels of heaven and the cosmic beings and the ascended masters stand against them, led by Archangel Michael and by the angels of my band. The time has come when the power of the Spirit must be brought to humanity as never before. In the battle for light and darkness, the triumph of the Spirit must come. The victory and the dawn of the golden age radiance enfolding humanity and bringing hope to every tiny babe that as his arms reach out to his mother, he may understand inwardly from his heart by the language of the heart that there is hope born in the chalice of the world for the Christ consciousness and those higher dimensions of the spirit which I recommend to every keeper of the flame as the boldness that will reach forth from the hand of God and wrest from his hand the authority and dominion he is so willing to give, which he originally conferred, but which humanity have let fall to the ground as their birthright has trembled and fallen with it. Now let us build, now let us exalt, now let us make a new age for humanity, for light shall triumph over darkness and light shall reign supreme. I am Astrea, and I release to you, according to cosmic design, a portion of my authority over the denizens of darkness and into the world of form, penetrating the astral realm and bringing light and hope and cosmic adventure to humanity for the glory of the cosmic light which never fails. By the authority of my circle and sword of blue flame, I stretch forth my hand over all of you who are truly keepers of the flame, and I say, take my authority in your own hand and heart and in your mind, and see that it is sealed there as the radiant determination to enforce by cosmic decree the authority of Almighty God in this world of form and in your individual life. I thank you. This cosmic moment I call unto you on the winds of liberty, come unto me. I have called, I have beckoned unto your soul. This night have I called. You who are here, come unto me. You do not think that you can come to our retreat here in the Far East. Let me tell you, you can, and you will need no human aid. For your consciousness may travel on wings of infinite harmony into our domain, and then I am sure that we will be able to teach you in a manner calculated to free you from the dregs of your own human feelings delusions, confusions, and problems. You will be free to receive the blessing of higher initiation conferred upon you first as an idea, as a concept. You will receive from us the authority to return to your body temples, understanding that the white marble upon which you walk with your invisible feet will have itself received the blessing of our light not only upon your feet but upon your entire consciousness 
that you may understand that the way to cosmic initiation is to become involved with those beings of light, that band of holy light ones who are with me. I have no intention of arranging an outer polytechnic display. I have no intention of seeking to impress you or your outer minds with the efficacy of my call. I simply call to you tonight. I call to you and I command your spirits free. And here is what I am going to do. I have asked that an electrode of infinite light energy be formed in the cosmic ethers around you and that that electrode shall be energized and that the energizing of that electrode shall signal the ascent of your souls in garments of light substance to our domain. But what energies do we use? We use the energies of the sacred mantrams that have been uttered here and in all parts of the Far East for thousands and countless thousands of years. The intonation of these mantrams by the sincere and faithful has evoked an enormous response from the cosmic hierarchs themselves for those followers of our brotherhood in the Far Eastern part of the world and also many adepts and students of the light in the West. Let it be clear then, we are invoking tonight on your behalf an alchemical experiment of considerable dimension. Let it be clear that we expect the involvement of all of you who are capable of participating in this event so that you will understand that a more than ordinary experience is scheduled for you. That you must participate willingly for we will not in any manner force you to do anything against your will, but we will certainly assist your divine will in fulfilling in you the fiat of this cosmic moment. The auspiciousness of this occasion, the call of disciples in the West to our retreat in the East is an event of considerable importance, for it is experimental in nature and seldom practiced in a group, as you see it now being practiced by our request. We urge that you understand that this electrode is being affixed directly above your crystal cord. And when I say this, I want you to understand that it is also extended down from your God presence until it is touching within one quarter of an inch of your head. While the angels of record are affixing these magnificent electrodes in place, the great ones in the temples and tabernacles in the Far East and tabernacles of the Spirit are readying themselves for this assault upon the bastions of the West. For it will be done by the winds of the Holy Spirit and it will be conferred upon you, one and all, who will receive it. And you will travel then through the cosmic ethers with the speed of light to that place where we are gathered together that you may hear those chants if your spiritual ears are open that we make to invoke from the deity those enormous responses that enable this planet to sustain its momentum around the cosmic sun. Do you understand that I am speaking about those initiations that are transpiring in the souls of the faithful. This is a great occasion for the West. It is the initiating in humanity of certain responses which hitherto required long novitiate and preparation. But because of our request before the cosmic lords and councils, it has been granted to you tonight if you are ready to receive it. If you are not ready, signify by expressing in your heart that you would rather not receive it and the angels of record will pass you by. If you are ready to receive it, 
then prepare yourselves for the anointing of the energies that are being gathered from the four corners of the earth and specifically from the disciples here in the Far East who themselves have prepared themselves at inner levels to serve the needs of humanity by invocation and the spirit of cosmic devotion. For the devotion and the devotional chants that are preparing here are calculated to invoke from the solar system a response that will itself be an initiation to this planet Earth. Do you understand that cosmic beings are preparing to anoint the body of the Earth? I say to the angels of record, are all the electrodes fixed in place? There are three that have not yet received the electrode. We will wait. There seems to be some debate in the minds of two or three people as to whether or not they are worthy of our proffered gift. Let me hasten to assure you that your own beloved Holy Christ Self is worthy. Now that we have removed the recalcitrance of some in the group, we are prepared to go on with the cosmic experiment. The electrodes of all who desire to receive this transcendental experience are now in place. We are prepared to begin the first release of the charge of our vital energy. Let them flow. There will be a step up in the general heat within these rooms. Do not be distressed. This will precede a coolness that will come. And a calmness and a peace and an inner knowing that you will be safely raised and elevated in consciousness until you for yourself will be able to experience the initiation of allowing your consciousness to flow along safe lines of light where transmittal is assured into the domain of the cosmic ones who preside over our temple. Now they are beginning the chant. From the censers they have released the sweet incense. The coolness is beginning. The calmness is beginning. The faith is being affixed to the consciousness of the disciples. The white-robed ones are in place and the flame is upon the altar. The flame of initiation, the flame of purity, Many of the cosmic monks, so-called, the devotees of the spirit, I think you would call them cosmic monks, they are now trooping into the vast marble chapel we have erected here in the etheric realm, 
in the Himalayas. Come, let us arise and enter into the temple in the skies over the Himalayas and be at peace. formation of the cosmic figure of Kuan Yin is upon the altar. She will soon replace it by her gracious presence. And the oil in the lamps of mercy will be lit. Let us remember our brothers and sisters that cosmic events are transpiring all around us. Let us remember the stair steps that lead to the stars affixed within the consciousness as holy centers, symbolic in the microcosm, but real in the macrocosm. Let us remember those invisible sun bodies that exist in the universe, unknown to any because of the polarization of these bodies dimension-wide. Let us remember then that in the higher spheres of initiation, those cosmic associations and affiliations are continuously taking place. That whereas there often rests on the body of humanity upon the earth the afflictions of life as the result of individual karma in the realm of perfection and purification. The spirit of mankind, often while he sleeps, has the privilege of attending our temples and entering into those rituals of purification and understanding whereby the soul is at last free. In case you are wondering about this transmission, tonight let me assure you that it is being made in the West by telepathy. We are telepathing our words to the brethren in the West, whom we have invited to our retreat, that they may understand the meaning of our functions as brothers in white. Let the body no longer then be a garment that you desire to wear. Trust the angels who have brought you thus far and realize that they will take care of all of your body functions. If you have not been successful in entering in to the full attunement with your presence whereby you could actually leave your body, so to speak, and mass, let us say to you that your consciousness can. And therefore, let your consciousness no longer be rooted and wedded to the physical body. Rise three feet into the air. Rise ten feet into the air. Arise above the building fifty feet into the air. Rise toward the stars 1,000 feet into the air. Move toward the east with the speed of light.
labor in spiritual things and faint not. Understand that the needs of humanity are very great. Understand that your prayers are heard. Understand that light can be invoked upon the entire human race. We will now chant together the ancient chant of the Orient, Om Mani Padmi Hum. Together, Om Mani Padmi Om sacred lotus of God's heart. Release the love ray to humanity today. Let the love and the strength and the devotion of Almighty God for humanity be felt. Let it be felt first in the hearts of the babes that they may receive comfort from God. Let it be felt by the little children that they receive grace from God. Let it be felt also by their angels who receive additional grace from God. Let it be felt by the sacred brothers in white all over the planetary body. And now I say in an almost unparalleled request, let it be felt by all mankind according to to their highest capacity to receive. The steps are before humanity, the doorway to the temple, man know thyself, is opening. The figure of the cosmic Christ self within invokes for all the realization that because they have a divine mediator, O Lord most high and most holy, that divine mediator will proclaim to the world, Lo, I am thy point of contact with thy God presence, and I bring to all the temples, viharas, mosques, and places of worship upon the planetary body a special and specific release of the angelic host calculated to make mankind aware of the potential of initiation for all. Tonight, we ask and we pray for this planet Earth, the special function of being a world tabernacle. Let us make every atom and cell of the planet to sing. Let us make the hearts of men to cling to their divine garments of light. Let us bring tonight into the world the hope of the world, the light of the world, through the universal Christ consciousness. And let us make men to see that there is hope in this tremendous light. O oh, light intensify, O oh, light intensify, O oh, light intensify. My invocation has reached the central sun and the light upon the planetary body is intensifying. It is flowing like a river of light over the planetary body until the very hills are rejoicing and the hopes of cosmic merriment 
fill the hearts of the ascended beings who have long served mankind, often without recompense, often without recognition from many. And the angels, the blessed angels, how they have served and how they have given their life. As you know, at Shigatsi, a great organ has been created by beloved Kathumi, which plays for those who are departing from this world and therefore brings to their consciousness the melody and harmony of higher spheres. Tonight I have asked that the great organ at Shigatsi shall be opened to your own inner hearing, that you also may receive this great radiance of the giant organ played by your own brother Kathumi. There will be a pause as we now ask you to listen to the transmittal of the radiation and music from the higher spheres of light through the great organ of the brotherhood at Shigatsi. The bell-like tones you hear with inner ears are the communion with far-off worlds. They are the melody of the sacred spheres. They are the consummation of the love of planetary bodies ascended. They are the love of cosmic beings, of archangels and their archaei, of Elohim and sacred fire beings seldom heard upon this planetary body, composed into a love symphony by your own beloved Kathumi. And now, as we draw the curtains of light before the amphitheater of our retreat in the etheric realm, we ask the angels of record and accompanying angels to guide you safely back to your body consciousness. We ask you now, as you arrive very quickly with the speed of light, over your focus of light, to descend now from the higher levels of 1,000 feet down to the 10-foot level, down to the 3-foot level, and once again safely return to your body consciousness intact with full breath and full record and memory of this event wherever the great cosmic law will allow. And we ask the extension of this be granted also to all who will hear this recording that they too may come to our retreat and our abode, that they may dwell with us in thought and in spirit and invoke in the crucible of human experience those dramatic confrontations that will enable men to see at last the reality and purposes of life, that they will no longer be concerned with the trivial manifestations upon the planet of darkened doings, but will understand the awakening of the beautiful Christ consciousness within you. And now that you once again have returned to human levels, may I extend to you upon this planetary body from the far east, from our etheric home of light, a welcome to visit us often. And while your physical bodies sleep, and then as your finer bodies awaken, let them awaken within our retreat. That you may have the knowledge and the desire and the beautiful concepts we desire to convey to you. For initiation is the conferment of mantles of accomplishment, of cosmic achievement. Initiation is the personal accomplishment 
of the Holy Christ Self wedded to the God Presence and invoking in the human levels of thought and feeling those transcendental experiences which are the forte of our radiance released unto humanity today. I, Lord Maitreya, lay at your feet my own crown of cosmic achievement as the potential of your own life stream, as the potential of fulfillment for humanity. For men are intended to be a complete manifestation of the cosmic Christ in all of the beauty and wonder of solid communion between themselves and the living God. Know you not that the living God is a living fire, a consummate spiritual being, creative in essence, and manifest and magnifying himself in all ascended and God-free beings? Well then, beloved hearts, won't you accept him tonight within the force field of your own consciousness, within the chalice of your own being, within the strength of your own heart, and within the strength of your own offering of yourself unto the living God. So then there will be born upon the planetary body many wondrous babes coming at last into the realization of spirituality conferred upon them as a mantle of strength shining in its righteousness that will ultimately do as it did in the case of Elijah, ensconce them in a chariot of living fire into those other octaves of achievement which are before you. The dawning doorway of our initiation is ever before you. Let none ever forget that magnificent doorway with those beautiful carvings of cosmic crosses upon it. Let them never forget the angel of record that stands to the right and to the left of that doorway, and let them never forget that lamp of cosmic knowledge that is carved just above the lintel itself. Oh, beloved ones, you are welcome here again and again and again until at last the refreshment of your souls has gained for you a crown that will not perish from the universe that is a crown of personal achievement under the aegis of the spiritual brotherhood and the fraternity of light who are with you now and confer upon you the mantle of our blessing. May eternal peace abide with you always.
from the domain of cosmic grace we come to salute with refreshment the souls of men to hold them once again in our clasp with a sense of peace and tranquility an ode to the immortality of the soul and delight is ours a fragrant delight in memory of the eternal wisdom of God let men understand the wisdom as dispensed in great drops of mercy unto men. Let them understand that this fragrance of consecration come once again to mirrored hearts is fruit for all the world, a consecration of the energies of the great white brotherhood offered as a floral tribute to the living Christ. For no dead gods occupy our domain, but only living ascended beings free from all the dross and lack of refinement so prevalent in the world order. May I then, by the power of the holy flame of cosmic wisdom, Invoke the angels of illumination's flame on mankind's behalf with a hope wafted to the world of renewed strength of purpose and dissemination of that purpose everywhere. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Uttered long ago is also a tribute to this age in reverse but it is truly necessary that we have a summoning of the body of God upon earth, the summoning of the elect to our cosmic purposes, the summoning of the elect to the response of the needs of humanity. We are not concerned with darkness, for it shall not long endure. We are concerned with the utilization of the light by humanity. For the light and energy which they use are God's energy and God's light. And truly, the Brotherhood has said, under cosmic divine direction, let us claim this radiance for the purposes, the holy purposes of God. Let us determine that a universal victory become possible for humanity. Let us determine that those consciousnesses who have bowed their knee to the Moloch of human greed and deceit shall also by divine decree fall upon their knees and worship the Spirit of universal wisdom, giving up those dark doings which they have engaged in, the subverting of the souls of men, and once again permitting their energies to be properly used by the cosmic and angelic hosts. For the services of light are truly rewarding. Verily, darkness also has its karmic reward. Yet, out of delight of spirit and fragrant hope, we continue to dispense the flowers of cosmic wisdom to humanity. But oh, how easy it is for individuals to momentarily understand and then forget at the precise moment when emotional struggles ensue between people engendered by the very powers of darkness that have misappropriated the light of God and the splendid light of holy wisdom. They have failed to consecrate their energies to truth and the dissemination of the spirit of brotherhood and cosmic love. 
Instead, they have determined to divide a world already yawning in a wide gap between the peoples of humanity until there is scarcely any more room for division or the world will almost literally spring apart into chaos and confusion. The Brotherhood beckons. The Brotherhood calls. The ephemeral things of the world will do naught but despite to humanity. But the marvels of heavenly delight will restore the proper virtue and use of cosmic knowledge. And in this sense we come to humanity tonight. We come in the solemn memory of those elder days of art when cosmic virtue and perfection manifested in song and in understanding, flowing into the mind through the open door of the consciousness invoked by a willing humanity, greater and greater light was dispensed under the ancient priest-kings until the world ultimately was led by ascended master ideals to a place of extreme beauty and loveliness, which memory stirs still in our inner being as it also ought to stir in your own. And so tonight I invoke in the name of God the stirring of those memories within your heart. I invoke in the name of God the stirring of ancient fires, the realization of cosmic endeavors that your souls engaged in, in consonance, with holy ideals and cosmic beings in ages past, long before you wore those garments of flesh you now wear. Will you understand then that mankind are in reality very ancient themselves? But how difficult this seems of comprehension by man, so familiar with his own structuring of time and space, so familiar with his own concepts, even of the gods themselves, as of the one God. So man is mindful of all the various manifestations called gods by some to whom they pay no allegiance whatsoever. How can they be expected to pay allegiance to one another? They have no respect in many parts of the world for human life. They have no respect for truth. They have only a recklessness with cosmic ideals, and they believe not, but are faithless and without purpose. Yet the purposes of the eternal God live on. They live on the very fruit of the elect, and the election, and the choice, is very nigh unto many, for the dividing of the way is at hand, the great division between light and darkness, and only light can live, for light is vibrant reality, and light is holy, a wisdom dispensed to humanity again and again. Now tonight, speaking from the royal Teton, from the great record room, I want to tell you that I have gazed upon the records of perfection of past ages. I have seen also human infamy displayed. And the warning itself of past history would, if heeded by humanity, clearly indicate the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But humanity will not listen, as they would not listen long ago when the Master, beholding Jerusalem, said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens underneath her wings, and ye would not, oh, ye would not. The cry of the Master has been the cry and mandate of our brotherhood. We have lamented the fact that humanity have turned toward the darkness when they should be turning toward the light. For the karmic confluences of worldly affairs draw very near unto the world. 
and in this very age mankind is trembling perilously upon the very cup of his future continued existence upon the planet and knows it not. He supposes that he can continue to influence the manifestations of nature with impunity. Let me witness to you for all time that this cannot be done by any. For in every age the karmic conditions of the past ages came also for redemption. And men ought to be glad and rejoice that they are able to correct by karmic recompense all of the mistakes of past ages. Yet men must be careful not to push the temptations of cosmic justice too far. For cosmic justice is a law set inexorably into motion by the lords of karma, but truly activated by human doings. When individuals continue then to contribute filth to the world and degradation, they bring the world that much closer to the brink of its own self-destruction. When they move by cosmic momentums and cosmic delight, mankind toward the higher spiritual ladder of climbing, they produce the fruit of holy reason activated in man, and man becomes a vital manifestation of God-consciousness. We here in the royal Teton stand now round about you, and with us are the entire karmic board, great regions from interstellar space, and cosmic beings unknown to some of you. We are concerned that holy wisdom flow, and that mankind, before it is too late, shall change his course and embark upon a wiser one of true brotherhood and cosmic adventure. We are concerned that humanity shall understand the passions of our delight in framing a cosmic world among mankind, by a gathering together and a harvesting of cosmic conditions that ought now to be made manifest within the blooming lotus of the cosmic mind of many of you. And as I speak, something will take place here tonight that will shed the cosmic instruction of our realm into your consciousness. We are planting seeds within the mind and being of many of you all who will welcome and allow us to do so. And these seeds will bear fruit and bloom among mankind. Holy ideas will come forth from many of your minds and hearts, and the consecrated endeavors of cosmic beings, of brothers from all worlds whatsoever, consecrated to God, will be made known unto many of you, until you will understand the splendor of the stars and man's hunger to reach out to our realm for new instruction. There are many things undreamed of by humanity that even your science fiction writers could not in their imagination possibly realize of the reality of universal lore made known to the ascended beings in cosmic councils and schools of holy wisdom. We are eager to impart this knowledge to mankind for his edification and upliftment that the world no longer careen upon her mad course of destruction wherein the little children become the victims of an educational system calculated to bring men into socialistic dimensions. We are concerned that men shall understand that the brotherhood of man is a spiritual manifestation whereby the soul can take delight in obtaining holy wisdom, how men can live together in peace and beauty under divine direction with an ultimate restoration of the priest kings into the world of form as the ascended master stepped through the veil and manifest the kingdom of heaven before the gaze of humanity so that rather than have such a small number as five or ten ascensions per year, we may bring millions to that great release of cosmic endeavor, whereby they are free at last to graduate from the schools of this world, to matriculate into cosmic dimensions, and to feel 
the enfolding of the spirit for themselves as the nurturing of humanity by the brothers of light from higher dimensions. We urge upon you then a realization of your great future in the cosmic realm as mankind begins to cast off and overthrow those unfortunate manifestations which are devilish and evil upon the planetary body and replace them one and all by those ascended master concepts and ideals which are the fruit of the Spirit in righteousness, peace, and joy manifest before God upon the altar of everlasting life. As I speak here tonight in the Royal Tetons, I am visited now by that august person, the Lord Sanat Kumara, who has stepped forth upon this planetary body to bring the impetus of his light and mighty light rays into the goblet of humanity's consecrated efforts. For upon this planetary body, I tell you, there are many souls who are devoted to the fulfillment of cosmic ideals and determined that they shall not pass. Those who would subvert the youth of the world and bring them into areas of destructivity and great harms shall also find themselves the recipient of the returning dragon of their own harms upon humanity. Oh, won't you please be seated. The Lord Sanat Kumara has brought with him a dispensation and a cosmic scroll from the heart of the great central sun, from Alpha and Omega, giving to humanity an indefinite period wherein they will be able to have, hopefully, the brotherhood of man manifest upon this planet. This is because of the love that has come from the chalice of myriad hearts and from the prayers of little children offered as a perpetual novena of cosmic loveliness unto God in the very heart of the great central sun. So cosmic purpose is magnified and the great strengths of cosmic purpose are also magnified and a staying of destruction granted to the earth for a period of a time, a time, a time, and a half a time, until humanity shall understand that the need now is to reckon with the cosmic scales of justice manifest upon this planetary body on behalf of the great lords of karma for the sake of the people of this planet. Now then, let us understand that in the midst of the dark cycle there cometh forth an angel of record and an angel of great light who has planted his feet upon the mountain called Erat. And behold, in memory of Noah's ark, and in memory of Erat, and in memory of the dove that went forth with the olive branch in his beak, I want you to know that the light and love of God on behalf of great planetary emissaries has brought to the world a staying of the dark cycle for a little time. And now there stands around about me tremendous numbers of the angelic hosts of light. They are many legions in number, and they have the power to affect all humanity upon this planetary body. And I want to tell you that tremendous changes are going to come into the very consciousness of humanity and a tremendous surge of turning toward the light and of turning toward the truth of God by humanity. This is being given in order to bring the everlasting gospel into manifestation among mankind. But let them also understand that there is still grave danger to certain areas of the world and to peoples and to nations and there shall continue some trembling in the world order and some distress. But at the same time, great forces of light that come out of the Eden of God have come forth and the olive branch of peace in the beak of the dove is being carried over the entire earth in order that the great everlasting gospel now being brought forth in the book Climb the Highest Mountain can come into the consciousness of humanity that they may have a percolation of those infinite truths contained therein so that humanity may have the opportunity of embracing truth as they have never embraced it before. Cosmic opportunity must be conveyed and the lamp of knowledge dispersed over all areas of the world. And we want all to understand that we await the coming of those individuals of the Spirit 
who will consecrate themselves to this great lamp of truth we hold and will understand that the flame, the flame pure gold, is a manifestation from out the central sun of peace and purity, abundant life for everyone. Will you understand it and hear our word, the words of living truth? Will you accept it on good faith? For this is your living proof. You yourselves becoming then the fullness God will send will help the earth to understand how they, each one, may rend those garments of darkness they now wear and have within themselves the shining garments of our love, their other self more brilliant still. The radiance of the holy lamp descends upon these shores. The love of God enforces on the planet earth. The love of God enforces light. The love of God, His worth, will bring to all the beauty of the understanding light, the light of cosmic knowledge and the light of cosmic delight. Ladies and gentlemen, let the Holy Spirit now be dispersed over the entire earth and bring forth the call, the great cosmic call, unto men of goodwill and peace that they are needed in the ranks of the faithful. They are needed to tell the story of eternal truth. They are needed to manifest as living proof their own understanding, their life, their devotion, their strength, the garnering of the fruits of the Lord upon the altar of eternal truth. Let the lamp of our knowledge come forth in your hand and in your heart. Let the lamp of our knowledge impart new vision to your eyes. Perceptions bold, let them arise. Angels of the sacred fire. Angels of immortality and holy wisdom descend upon the planetary body in incalculable numbers to the mind of man. Bring the light and advent of holy knowledge into manifestation, the direction of the souls of men. Let them faint no more in darkness or labor in confusion, but let them arise into the camp of the faithful in memory of that great servant of God from past ages, the great being called Gideon, I want you to understand the hour has come when the clay pitchers must be broken and mankind must be no more concerned with outer things but with the inner light, the joy, the balm within his soul. For then I know that mankind will elicit a response from the eternal brotherhood of that peace that maketh whole and we will restore the former boundaries by the holy knowledge of light, and the planet can once again find its rightful place in the great solar sphere, in the great solar plan, for the earth is an extension of the sun. The planets are extensions of the sun, and all of the sun systems are extensions of the great central sun. And the great central sun is the extension of the one, filling all and infilling all with the fire of light and love and peace. May your hearts be no more troubled, but secure in the domain of accomplishment for the Lord. Go ye into the byways and the highways of the world and tell humanity the great message of the eternal brotherhood. For light must replace darkness. The light of knowledge must be imparted to men. The light of strength must once again reconsecrate the chalice of opportunity until the world is free to honor the ascended master consciousness as a supreme victory of God within humanity. And all will know and understand that for this cause came they into the world 
And for this cause were they born, to honor eternal purpose, and to be that purpose. Let me speak a word to the captain of the angels. O beloved captain, whose name begins with A, I shall not speak thy name, but thou knowest who thou art, and I ask thee to impart unto this group tonight, according to their capacity to receive, a gift of our love from out the holy flame of wisdom from the ancient temples of Atlantis and other places, from the great temple of the god Meru in South America, and from our own retreat in the Grand Tetons. I ask that this gift, indivisible, a part of holy wisdom shall be given as an inner token through cosmic thaumaturgy, through cosmic eye magic. Let it be framed as a talisman within the heart flame of every individual in these rooms who will accept it and let none reject it. For it is a talisman that bears certain ancient words inscribed upon it by a master craftsman from the heart of the central sun, and it holds within it a focus of holy wisdom for everyone, that chaos be dethroned and order be enthroned. This is our plea, this is our love, this is our conveyance majestically given from the hand of our Lord Sanat Kumara unto the earth sent directly from Alpha and Omega in the heart of the sun as a gesture of our love and our esteem for all the endeavors of the students of the light everywhere upon the planetary body. Keep on keeping on. Keep on enthroning holy wisdom. Keep on walking in wisdom's holy way. Keep on loving God and loving yourself free. For then, one day, you shall find yourself in our presence and then you will understand what it is we have laying upon our council table this evening. A conspiracy of light, a determination to brighten the future of all mankind with holy illumination's flame. I want to seal you in my heart. God's peace unto the world.